Hello, this is Scott, and this lecture in the Transgender Health series focuses on transgender health screening. LGBT plus patients have a higher prevalence of smoking and drug abuse, likely due to minority stress. Um, a good social history that includes smoking, alcohol use, drug use, and an appropriate sexual history should be obtained um, with appropriate referrals to cessation counseling. Another big issue in the transgender population, especially for transgender men, is pelvic pain. There's a wide differential of trans-specific and traditional female health problems that uh, affect the transgender male. So there's atrophic vaginitis. Um, testosterone promotes vaginal atrophy, especially um, with decreased estrogen levels. And topical estrogen may be applied to the vagina uh, without significant systemic absorption or femination while treating the atrophic vaginitis. Post-surgical gender-affirming surgery, um, adhesions can be present. There may be nerve irritation or incarceration of organs. Uh, an appropriate surgical history uh, and rule out of other causes of pelvic pain are appropriate in this patient population. Pregnancy and ectopic pregnancy are possible. Although testosterone greatly reduces the risk of pregnancy, it does not completely eliminate the risk, and many trans pa patients also lose access to hormones during their treatment. Um, there are many case reports of transgender males who become pregnant because they lose access to their testosterone. Uh, this is highlighted in the Power and Limits of Classification, which is an adjunct article that I encourage everyone to read. Uh, there may be torsion um, or complications post-hysterectomy. There may be ovarian cysts. Uh, transgender patients are at higher risk of sexually transmitted infections. Um, and a comprehensive sexual history should be taken to assess risk for cervicitis or PID. Um, you should also ask if the patient still has their cervix. Um, transgender patients are at higher risk of sexual trauma and may have PTSD related pelvic pain. And lastly, um, urinary tract infections and bacterial vaginosis are possible in the transgender male. Um, patients on testosterone are at higher risk of UTI and bacterial vaginosis due to um, atrophic vaginitis. Uh, it may be responsive to vaginal estrogen. Anal cancer screening is something that's becoming more and more prevalent nowadays, um, but there is insufficient data to really truly know what the results from uh, anal pap smears really mean. Um, high rates of HIV, risky sexual behaviors, uh, receptive anal intercourse, and smoking amongst transgender women are all high risk factors amongst women associated with anal HPV infection and anal cancer. The World Journal of Gastrointestinal Surgery back in 2016 looked at all the anal pap smear and anal cancer testing guidelines. And uh, there wasn't really any consistency across guidelines. As of right now, it's reasonable to do HPV testing and anal pap testing in patients with HIV. Um, and it may be uh, reasonable to do anal pap testing and HPV testing along with digital rectal exams in um, transgender patients as a whole, although you should always take a good sexual history um, and ask about HPV vaccination before proceeding with tests. Uh, according to a 2019 systematic review, uh, up to 14% of transgender men and 3% of transgender women in the United States are HIV positive. This becomes a lot <coughs> higher levels when you consider uh, racial minority transgender patients with black and Hispanic transgender women having the highest rates of HIV infection at 44% and 26% respectively. Uh, up to three quarters of transgender patients report being tested for HIV, but less than half have knowledge of pre-exposure prophylaxis. Uh, appropriate counseling on PrEP at, type, at the time of HIV testing may reduce risk of HIV transmission amongst the U.S. transgender population. Uh, mitigating transgender stigma is important to ensure adequate patient follow-up. One of the most difficult patients to try and get to come to clinic is the transgender woman of color. Uh, Anecdotally, it's very difficult to get them to seek health care due to the amount of stigma that they face. All high-risk patients should get tested for HIV at least annually. Uh, some providers recommend testing every three to six months. Uh, it's important to know the different types of HIV testing that there are. Uh, the nucleic acid tests look for viral RNA in the blood. Uh, they're the most accurate, 
but they're very expensive and not routinely used. Uh, this can be used as a confirmatory test um, if one of the other tests is positive. The antibody test looks for HIV antibodies in the blood. There's a window period of about two months after exposure where someone may have a false negative before they make the antibodies. Uh, most rapid tests and most home tests are antibody tests. So if a patient says that they've been tested for HIV after a risky exposure, it's important to know that if they did a home test and it was negative, it could be a false negative if it was shortly after their exposure. Antibody antigen tests attempt to close this window period by looking for the P24 viral antigen directly on the HIV envelope along with the HIV antibody in the blood. It's the most accurate commonly used test. It mitigates the window period and it's the test that we use here at our in-house testing at UVA. There may be a false positive on this test though with some cross reaction with the P24 antigen and so often nucleic acid testing is needed for confirmation. PrEP, or pre-exposure prophylaxis, is a once-daily dose of intracytabine and tenofovir. Uh, brand name is Truvada. Uh, I think Descovy is also a new HIV medication that is also used for PrEP that has come out. Uh, it's used to prevent HIV infection in high-risk individuals. Uh, effectiveness of PrEP nears 100%, with only case reports of HIV transmission of people using PrEP as prescribed, although people have varying medication adherence, and the de facto effectiveness is about 92%. Patients taking PrEP should get routine HIV and STI testing to prevent the development of risk resistance to the medication should the patient become infected. Breast cancer screening is in transgender patients is an evolving field. Uh, transgender women um, in a 2019 nationwide cohort study in the Netherlands were found to be at a 46 times percent or 46 times risk of breast cancer um, risk increase compared to cisgender men, uh, but have lower risk than cisgender women. Um, transgender men have reduced risk compared to cisgender women, but have uh, increased risk compared to cisgender men also. Uh, invasive breast cancer in transgender women was rapid in onset in this population study, with an early age of onset suggesting that in, suggesting that uh, hormonally caused cancers may be due to an underlying predisposition. So patients with a family history of breast cancer should be counseled before starting hormone therapy. It's important to take an appropriate surgical history at this time also. Uh, Transgender men who have mastectomy are at reduced risk of breast cancer, but still may have some retained breast tissue that is still able to have breast cancer in it, especially since a lot of transgender men elect to have nipple sparing mastectomies, which leaves some breast tissue which could become cancerous. There are no good screening guidelines at the moment for breast cancer screening for both transgender men and transgender women. Currently, many providers start testing for breast cancer around five years after starting hormones. Although, because of this study with early invasive breast cancer, it might be reasonable to start breast cancer screening um, based on age match cisgender women guidelines for both transgender men and transgender women. There's also some data on how uh, hormone therapy may affect ovarian and cervical cancer. Uh, there have been case reports of ovarian cancer with high expression of androgen receptors in transgender men, with one retrospective cohort study finding an association of testosterone with increased rates of invasive epithelial ovarian cancer. This is a difficult population in, to screen for cancer for because ovarian cancer in general um, has very poor screening methods. There's CEA and there's routine ultrasound, but overall, uh, neither has been found to reduce mortality or catch cancer any earlier. Cervical cancer is related to lifetime sexual practices, HP vaccina HPV vaccination, um, and HPV exposure, along with smoking. Transgender men who retain their cervix should be advised to follow the same screen gu screening guidelines as age-matched cisgender women and advised on smoking cessation.